In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. There are times in our lives when things don't seem to be very clear to us, and we may be a bit confused, and we don't know where to look for the answers. Today, our readings come to us from the book of Numbers and the Gospel of John, and we find our Lord reminding us that if we look to Him, the answers will come in the grace of His holy time. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow both in merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. The Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you did not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Life is full of irony. We encounter a situation and we don't quite know what to do about it or we don't understand it. And then as things evolve and they become clearer, we can say, oh yeah, now I get it. Our ancestors, according to this reading from the book of Numbers, are in the desert and they are complaining. I cannot imagine a church group complaining about anything in any fashion. But it seems that our ancestors were unhappy, upset with God, irritated with Moses, why did you bring us out here? We could have just stayed where we were. Things would have been fine. Here we are. Nobody knows what's happening. On and on and on. And so God then, in his relationship to Moses and Moses' relationship to God, gets instruction. After God is angry at his people and he sends these fiery serpent Serap serpents to, to, to attack them, he tells Moses, mount one on a pole and have the people look at it. And what was once ugly and frightening and unclear to them will become a source of healing and of hope. We know this symbol well and from our medical world. We often see a serpent wrapped around on a pole. And while there is irony in that, in that what was attacking our ancestors became a source of healing because they gazed upon it with hope and renewed trust. What is it in our own lives that we find confusing? We look around ourselves today in a world that even a month ago we could have never dreamed the difficulties that we're facing. A virus infecting millions of people, the complications of that virus killing thousands of people, and we yet do not know what will come out of this very difficult situation. John tells the people, excuse me, Jesus tells the people in this gospel from John, 
when you raise me up and you gaze upon this paradoxical cross which will bring you life, you may realize that I am. We can go back to the third chapter of the book of Exodus to get an explanation of who I am is. So in these days of confusion, in these days of a way of living that most of us have not experienced, in the day of shortage of things even in the grocery store, the drug store, we may be confused and we don't understand this and we are hurting. I wonder for us as a people of faith, might this be an opportunity while many of us are confined either totally or partially, what if we took the rosary that we may have in our hand and look at the crucifix there? What if we gaze upon a crucifix or an icon of Jesus that we may have in our homes? What if we spend time in these days of confusion and hurt and doubt and fear, looking upon him, do we keep our eyes fixed on him, he who is the great physician? Will our time of quiet and some of it spent in loneliness or alone, what if we look upon the paradoxical sign of a crucified Christ who promises us life everlasting. We are grateful that God has given us his son as the sign of our life and so we have the courage this morning to place our prayers before him. Hear us, Lord, in our prayer. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful, faithful Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. For all faithful stewards who support the ministries of the church, we pray. Faithful, faithful Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For pastors and bishops who preach with a love of the word of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Faithful, Faithful Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are caring for elderly parents and for their peace of mind, we pray to the Lord. Faithful, Faithful Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For single parents and for their spiritual well-being, we pray to the Lord. Faithful, Faithful Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those living in fear and anxiety, we pray to the Lord. Faithful, Faithful Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we do ask that you hear the prayers that we have voiced, those that we hold in the quiet of our hearts for ourselves and for others for a very troubled world. We ask that you receive them as we place them before you in faith and in trust and in the name of your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgments on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. We join now our voices with those of the angels and the saints in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we ask you, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all those who look to you for healing and hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And I pray that the peace of the Lord will indeed be with each one of you. We know that many of us are watching the liturgy through the wonderful world of media, and we may be alone and not able to offer someone a sign of peace. But in our hearts and in our minds and in our prayers, let us offer each other that gift in these days of great uncertainty, knowing that the great physician is in charge. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
O God, who chose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go now to glorify the Lord by our lives. <laughs>